It is in October the 24th, 2012. That music can mean only one thing. Either Damien is here, or the Antichrist of professional wrestling, GCW's CEO, the man that made wrestling synonymous with Honey Boo Boo, Mad Dog Dan Sawyer. Mad Dog, how you doing tonight, sir? <laughs> Somebody's gonna hit, hit with lightning. This is gonna be great. That's right. Maybe yeah. hit somewhere in Phoenix City. Right Or now, maybe Piedmont. Everybody that is listening right now is going, The Omen. I think I know that movie. So oh, those, yeah. That was a song from the, the Omen. The original. The original. Don't go with the, uh, the remake. Uh, Gregory right. Peck is the only one I need. Uh, Gregory Peck is, yes, is that is the that. best. Get on your Hot Wheel and kill your mom. That's right. Get on your Hot Wheel and run your mother off. But oh, Matt, man. The reason why you were considered uh, the Antichrist, so to speak, of professional wrestling is because you had the audacity to to go out and uh, exploit the exploited. Yeah. To go actually, I, I, and actually go out and, and how dare you, Mad Dog Dancer, you're such – how dare you go and make all these guys – on a show and put a thousand eyes onto one show over that fourteen yeah. hundred at least. Yeah, and twelve fifty turned away. Don't forget that. I, I sure would hate to get people in the seats and cross promote because you know you, if you're not a purist and if it's not all about wrestling, uh, see how well that uh, what is that ring of uh, hombres? Is that what it is? Ring of hombres. How well does that draw? You know. Uh, have they drawn a thousand people this year? Maybe with a few shows. Oh, what about that TNA? Yeah, uh, not even drawing three hundred people the other night in Georgia with Angle and everybody, but Sting and Hogan on the show. What's the TNA? Wait a minute! Oh my God! Are we serious? <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's great to be me, and it's great to be a professional wrestler. Isn't that right, Wicked? Isn't it great just to be in the wrestling business? This is actually the business. Instead of a bunch of poo nannies going around wearing Party City outfits and a pair of shoes that they got at Hibbets. <laughs> you know? So, uh, you know, it, it, it is time to change the way wrestling is viewed. You know, we, maybe we need to go back carny style, you know, a little catch wrestling and see who the real guys are in this business and actually do something instead of, uh, Try to get six high spots that they copied off a of Van Dam Jerry Lynn match that they copied off the internet and instead of knowing psychology when to take a damn bump. That's what we need to get back to the basics of trained professional wrestling. Uh, the unlucky charms. Uh, guys like Micah Taylor, Sergeant Hammer, David Young. You know, David Young was my tag team partner because I had to turn my back on him and join up with the Uso brothers who were at the time known as the Samoan Soldiers. And uh, we had to put a beat down, Dave. But uh, God bless you, David Young. Yeah, you know, actually, I heard the story of them eating the popcorn uh, as you and uh, Orion beat the hell out of the, the mark. <coughs> so, uh, yeah, Jeff McGowan, yeah, Jeff McGowan was going to get out and do something. And David said, nope, I think they've got it, Jeff. Yeah, I think they did. Oh, Lord have mercy. But uh, mm -hmm. you were one of the guys that backstage uh, – first of all, you have a monitor backstage, so – Kudos, thank you, thank you, Dan, for for you know because you you have it there for guys to come. And the great thing about it is guys actually watch the matches. Uh, mm -hmm. But for those that know, no you, more peeking through the dip curtain. You know that that's thank God that's so old school. And uh, you know there's there's things to be done, and uh, everybody's got a job to do. It isn't just you go and lace your boots, take a bump. I mean, if that's the kind of show you're on, you must be working for the Fed. But uh, that's not the case. I mean, you should be, uh, you know, helping out the young guys and, you know, being supportive or unsupportive, whatever the case may be, you know, whatever you think your role is in this business. If you haven't been working uh, 10 years, you should keep your damn mouth shut unless someone asks you your opinion, but uh, that's just that's just me. Um, you know, wrestling is doing well right now, and I want to give props to Honey Boo Boo and her family, the top TLC reality show uh yeah she did bring some people but guess what those people came and they stayed and uh that's the important thing you know all, all this ribbon and poking all i can do that all night long because 
that's what I do because I'm an ass. But, um, you know, I want to say I've already got 350 tickets on hold for Saturday, you know, at the upcoming event at Southern Legends Fan Fest in Pell City, Alabama this Saturday night. So it does work, that cross-promotion thing. So any guys out there who have got ideas, go for it, man. And if anyone runs you down, it's probably because they're pissed. You know, everybody loves you when you ain't making shit. But uh, the moment you start making a dollar, you're you're an idiot or, oh, how dare you? You know, that, that's just pure jealousy in this business. So, you know, some people you're never going to please, and they're never going to put you over, even if you paid them. So, uh, you know, just just keep doing what you're doing. Keep working hard. Make guys be trained to put on your show. I don't care where you're working. If you're, if you're in the world today and you're hearing my voice, you know, whether it's to be determined or at a later chance, TNT, you know, listen up. These guys don't put guys on your show that are not trained, just because they'll work for free, or maybe they'll even pay you to be on the show. Don't put these guys on your show unless you're pissing on the wheels of progress and what we're trying to pull in professional wrestling. So uh, that's my soapbox for the moment. I'm sure I'll find another one before the night's over. Well, t- uh, tell us if you will. Uh, was TLC cool with this? Because we know TLC representatives were actually there in their freaking suits in the back watching every movement. Were they were they kosher with this, so to speak? Because yeah, I mean, they were TMC real kosher. There? No, they were actually really kosher. Uh, they weren't going to go for us even film up. And as the day went on, I've been around that family since 9 a.m., because I talked to them six weeks prior to and filled out a 10-page contract to have them there. You know, there were some other wrestling groups that had tried to book them and said they were coming and didn't have documentation and didn't have proof of insurance and all that kind of stuff. I mean, like liability. So sure that, you know, when you bring in stars and stuff, you have to book liability on There's a higher chance. Something. And so Yeah. All right. That... Don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but if you're going to set a celebrity in your audience as a fan, which is weird because I've never had celebrities come in and set an audience. Can now, we even call Honey Boo Boo a celebrity? Uh, she's on TV, but Jesus Christ, fuck her, Honey Boo Boo. Not literally. That's illegal. But yeah, she can go to hell. Uh, Just my tell opinion. Us- <laughs> Uh, Dan, tell us about some of the resentment. Uh, what was the... What oh, was hold the, on a second. Uh, We've lost Dan Sawyer. Dan, Dan's gone. Yeah. For those who know, we are actually online right now. Uh, well, I'm trying to get him back. Uh, Mad Dog Dan Sawyer of Global Championship Wrestling out of Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, actually, Honey Boo Boo, to get everyone up to speed, uh, showed up to see a wrestler named Steven Stiles. Well, of course, she was going to be there anyways. Uh, what better way than to get everybody a, a lot of extra eyes uh, than to exploit this girl who was already exploited from her own show. And I know she was on another show, Toddlers and TRs, which I cannot watch that show. I tried to watch it one time, and it was the weirdest shit I've ever seen. It was to see the, the girl. It was – I have two little girls. I pray to God that, that my girls don't want to do that. The devil has returned? Dan, are you back, sir? Yeah, I'm back, man. I think the Beatty Ray must have intercepted us. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> oh, never about... this is the only one. Oh, you're, you're, that's the only one. You're the only one that's going to get that, but that's, that's for us, right? We we can't smart anybody up. Uh, that's not what we do here. Uh, <laughs> Dan, you uh, you were saying about uh, Honey Boo Boo and about having uh, insurance, having a celebrity in the audience when we lost you, sir. Right. Uh, yeah, she is a reality star, but anybody who can make 20 grand uh, for 30 minutes of their life every week is doing something right. You know, I mean, it's a gimmick, guys. Go with it. You know, I mean, uh, don't, don't, don't hate on them. Just realize they're, they're getting paid to, uh, you know, look kooky or do whatever the network wants them to do. So. Kind of just, just understand it still is show business, even though it is reality TV. How much immediate resentment did you get and hostility when it was uh, determined 
that Honey Boo Boo would be there because she was actually there to see Steven Stiles. Mm-hmm. And as I said, uh, when we lost you, uh, you just exploited the exploited. I know, but I've been exploited my whole life. <laughs> so. That's wrestling. That's right. Uh, how much you know, right up front? there was only three people. There was only three people that said negative things. You know, uh, people from other organizations um, in Georgia were hot because she chose us over them because she came to us. And, you know, someone else is like, oh, I got this handled. You know, how many times have you heard that? And I said, oh, don't worry, don't worry. And then, oh, it didn't happen. You know, after I learned with, if I, if I learned with the bastard, Rick Fleer, shoot name, Richard, also known as his nickname, Dick, uh, you, you gotta put these bastards on the, on the contract and stick to them. But she was a hell of a lot more professional, her whole family. Then uh, Mr. Fleer, Flair, fly about the air. You know, uh, it's funny. He still sends emails trying me to book his kid Reed. So, you know, I'm like, okay, yeah, whatever. So, uh, not interested. If you're listening, Rick, which I know you are, because you're hoping somebody's going to put you over. <clears throat> which not here, <laughs> not today, pal. All right, sir. Go ahead, ask me. No, your, I'm, uh, I'm kind of disappointed because the last time we had you on To Be Determined, we almost called Ric Flair. I was yes. hoping oh, tonight that's... would be the night that we actually pulled the trigger on that, but uh, sadly... No, it's you want to go ahead? I've got his number. I'll give it to you right here on the air. Oh, no, we don't want we don't want a lawsuit. Don't we? We've already got trying? one lawsuit against us, Mad Dog. Mad Dog, for, for for those, Mad, Mad Dog Dan Sawyer and Fast... Eddie Powell, I'm sorry, Lane, we're actually being sued by another organization, by one particular person. And I can't believe this guy is suing us. And for what he's suing us for, and I'm not going to put the kid over because he's a retard. But I was amazed that people actually sue each other in this business all, all over an angle of all things. Just Hold on these a people are retards. I think I know this person. Does he Uh-oh. live in New Jersey? Did he used to work for Sirius? <laughs> oh my god, that's that's a little inside joke. Uh, but uh, <laughs> Mad Dog Dan Sawyer, uh, seriously though, uh, leading up to this, uh, Honey Boo Boo, who had actually been in attendance to some of your other shows before, correct? Uh, she had actually uh, been to a couple events, correct? Uh, no, not for me personally. She had just uh, went with the uh, NIGWA or whatever, went Millersville. She was just familiar with Styles, and they started getting hooked up watching the Blip TV, which is a way to catch GCWPro.com. You can watch the show every week and go back and watch past episodes. Shameless plug. Um, you can do that, and that's how the family got acquainted with us. They're like, you know, this show's going on in Milledgeville. We want to come see this big show. So I, I appreciate that they were putting us over a little bit, so that's great. So that's that's how it all came about. They called and said it wanted to have me. You know, he, the dad got put in the hospital. He got released. And uh, they told him he really didn't need to be in the wheelchair, being on public with a bunch of people. And he said he wasn't going to miss the wrestling show. And uh, he's a pretty solid cat. He just hated he couldn't help put the ring together because that's what he kind of does in Milledgeville. So the, uh, the, the family's cool, man. I, I don't know. You know, what people want to think and do. But I've been around the real family, and, uh, you know, I'll put them over all day long because uh, they're nice. And uh, they're, they're a little, 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 little southern, really southern. But, um, you know, at least they don't BS. You know, when they say they're going to be there, they say they're going to do something, they do it. And if you go back and read her Facebook the day after the show, She'll tell you that Global Championship Wrestling did exactly what they said they were going to do and more to take care of them when they were here. You know, we had to contend with, you know, I've never had paparazzi at a show. I'm just going to be honest. I've never had four local news networks and TMZ and U.S. Weekly and Rolling Stone Magazine all in one show and all trying to get in for free. Uh, You had to let the local news in just because that was just, the way it was, but, you know, TMZ, if you go to the TMZ website right now, 
you can see the actual video of Wild Thing Will Owens insulting the family, uh, Honey Boo Boo getting in the ring, and then her sister is jumping on the back of adorable Anthony and Marvelous Michael of uh, the BFFs, uh, one of the new tag teams in Global Championship Wrestling. They run around the, the scene a little bit throughout Georgia and Tennessee. So, uh, you know, it's, it, it, it's a good thing. So TMZ still talking about it. That was Monday night. And there was a thing on ABC News about it, too. So. Cool uh, stuff. It, 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 anything that you can still get publicity, you know, almost 30 days after, I would say it was a pretty good thing. Because, you know, every, everybody thinks everything we say and do in wrestling is uh, just for show. But, you know, there, there's we do it for more than just a show. We do it because we love it. So, uh, this uh, Saturday, Saturday, you have, speaking of shows... You have what a lot of people consider your WrestleMania, GCW's WrestleMania <laughs> of the promotion, Southern Legends Fan Fest. And you laugh because you know it. Uh, last year, you had about 42 tables set up with like 550 Southern Legends. I mean, uh, this is one of those guys. It's almost like, and I've said this before, it's almost like a convention because of all these guys trying to get on the show. And I know you're very particular about who you the guys that you put on the show, uh, because they all are Southern legends. Tell us, if you will, about this Saturday in Pell City. Well, you know, we got WWE Hall of Famer, Bullet Bob Armstrong, uh, the, the, the real Southern living legend. That He is the man, and you can't come to the South without knowing who Bullet Bob Armstrong is. Uh, he's putting his mask on the line versus the equalizer, the big 350-pound silent giant, as he calls himself. But he has gotten back together with the legal legal. Howard C. Cross, and uh, they're saying they're going to take the mask off Bullet of Bob Armstrong this Saturday night. But in the main event, first time, I think since the UWF and WCW closed, the Lightning Express, White Lightning, Tim Horner, tagged up with his partner, Brad Armstrong, and they'll be taking on a team of Dr. Tom Pritchard and the current GCW Heavyweight Champion, Micah Taylor. Dr. Tom Pritchard and Brad Armstrong were both trainers and Deep South Wrestling for WWE. So uh, there, there was bad blood there back in the 80s, uh, back in the Continental Wrestling days from uh, Birmingham, Alabama, and Montgomery, as well as Dothan uh, at the Houston County Farm Center. So uh, these guys are going to be tying it up in a tag team match. And here's the thing. They all look good. Brad Armstrong looks better now than he did when WCW was making him be buzzkill, when, uh, you know, Eric Bischoff thought it was funny to have him pull a rib on his own brother, the road dog, Jesse James. So um, if you want to see guys that can still go and know how to put on a match, you know, you, you're going to see that in the main event with the Lightning Express versus Dr. Tom and Micah Taylor. And Dr. Tom was known for many tag teams, the Heavenly Bodies with Stan Lane, uh, Jimmy, Gigolo, Jimmy Del Rey, you know, they were in the WWE for a while, but one of the names that people even forget that Dr. Tom did was Body Donna's with uh, Skip and Kip, which was uh, Dr. Tom and Chris Candido managed by Sonny, and, uh, you know, that was, that was a great tag team back in the 90s. So uh, Dr. Tom knows the tag team wrestling as well as the uh, singles competition. But we got eight big matches. Battle roll for the uh, number one contendership for the TV title of Global Championship Wrestling. Uh, we got a ladies' match, Tracy Taylor versus Octavian. We got Spiral straight back from his 0-1 Japanese tour, taking on Chris Jacobs in a flag match. And the GCW Tag Team Championship, full throttle, taking on Mudbone and Aiden Solo. Mean Mike Posey, recently seen on Ring of Honor, taking on Rob Adonis. And... Uh, from the underground, Xander Stone taking on the number one contender for the GCW Heavyweight title, Mr. O'Hagan. Now, Micah Taylor is the leader of the underground. For those who don't know of the underground and uh, their strong style, you know, Micah Taylor is the current 0-1 U.S. champ right now from Japan with Nakamura, and uh, he's put together these I don't know what would you what would you call it a, a gambit, if you will, of uh, Professional wrestlers featuring Spiral, Aiden the Solo. The Rogues Gallery? The, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
There are no like, unlucky like charms. <laughs> so like Batman villains. Yeah. That's the, that's what yeah, I told okay. you. I was like, you guys are like a bunch of Batman villains. I know exactly. You know, you got Spiral with his deck of cards on his on his abs. So you know he does look a Batman villain with that new haircut. So you know, come down and check it out. Antonio Garz is on the card. The Night Prowler, Sergeant Hammer, Showtime Shane Fox, Cousin Redneck Amos Moses, Scotty Blaze, Tommy Gage. Super Shinobi, Psycho Circus, Drew Adler, Theodore Tutwaller the third, the unlucky charm. Whoa, 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 Chris whoa, 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 Not, not to, not to market, not you know, not to step over my own men. You know, damn, common knowledge, Damon Christopher, and you know, the primal Chris Knox. Teddy Tutwaller the third is going to be there. Yeah, he is Theodore Let, Tutwaller the third. Ladies is, and gentlemen, uh, for, for those that don't know, Theodore Tutwaller the third, T three as I call him. <laughs> is a man, a man, a true veteran, and I'm saying this, and I don't give a shit, and I'm sorry to interrupt you, Mad Dog, and I'm sorry for no, all of it. T3 is one of those veterans. If he sees that you did something wrong, he doesn't wait for the fucking promoter to tell you. He pulls you aside, and he doesn't <laughs> tell you, what the fuck was that? T3's like, so kid, uh, this is, this is my impression of T3. So kid, uh, yeah, it's what pretty happened good out there? already. <laughs> what, what happened out there? What happened out there? Uh, well, um, can I, can I make a suggestion? That says, then, can I make a suggestion? Can I make a suggestion? Uh, if you'll do this instead of this, you might make a few dollars, kid. You know, good stuff, though. Always good stuff. I love you. <laughs> Keep it up. Very positive guy. Always a great guy to come around. In between Sergeant Hammer coming back, and we're going to break k Sergeant Hammer lost his son, who I've known my entire career. One of those, a great kid, used to help out with, uh, with the ring. Tragically killed, uh, how, how long ago was it? Oh, bro, I, like four to six months, I don't know, I've just lost track of it, and he came to the training center Sunday, and I haven't seen him since the funeral, you know, as we, we're breaking the fave here, it's just, you know, uh, it breaks your heart when you see a 16-year-old boy that had his whole life in front of him, and I know you're a dad yourself, and I don't know if the other guys are, but, uh, you know, the the guy wanted to be a wrestler, and, you know, he would actually come up and take bumps and care. He wasn't one of these guys that wanted to just come with his daddy and sit around uh, like some of these old grizzle guys do just to kind of be around the boys. The kid would get in there and bump his ass off for two and a half hours and do Hindu squats with us and just want to work his ass off till it was time. He didn't want to leave, you know. Only if I could get more of the boys to want to put as much time as this kid wanted to and he was hungry, and that's the difference. I guess when I'm talking about these guys who don't train and stuff, I guess that's what burns my ass a little bit and blisters me that, um, you know, there's there's people out there who still care about this stuff. And it was, it was the thing. He was already 6'2", six, 6'3", six, <laughs> at 16 years of age. Heck, hell, he was, he was taller than me, which I'm only 5'10", but he was taller than me when he was 13. So... You know, the kid had a, a chance to do it, but he's all around just really good guy, and his dad is is awesome. You know, uh, he's one of the few guys that can still hook your ass and shoot on you. Uh, you know, he was he was a he was a real military wrestler. He wrestled in high school, and uh, you never can have too many of those guys on there instead of a bunch of whining pussies that were scared to make a backdrop. You know, so. Um, you know, kudos to that. But let's don't get too serious there. Yes, I'm but, sorry. I apologize. Uh, <laughs> but you know, it's good. No, hey, it's good. You you put over. You know, uh, kid's name was Austin. Good kid. You know, uh, all day long, I, w- I would I would tell how great he was, and I wouldn't just say that because his dad's probably not even listening to this. But uh, I'm telling you, uh, if there was more kids like him, because he was still respectful, because he knew if he wasn't, his dad would whoop that ass. Which you know. I think that's still good to punish your kids a little bit. <laughs> uh, Sergeant Hammer, actually, uh, the reason why he got his name Hammer, and a lot of people know him from my YouTube uh, video that we won uh, a Webby or whatever the hell it's called. We actually finished like third and fourth. Uh, we were sitting around playing Monopoly. It's called GCW uh, no Life. GCW Life or GCW Monopoly, one of the two. He is the very country uh, military guy, and they're going, well, I lost. I got my, oh, just great stuff. Always a hell of a guy. Sergeant Hammer actually got his name Hammer because he, in his, uh, tour in, uh, Vietnam, he actually took out a whole platoon of Vietnamese with a hammer. 
<laughs> his gun misfired. His gun misfired and jammed, and there was a hammer lying around, and he actually took out an entire platoon. Yep. That is a shoot, and that's why he is Sergeant Hammer. So, and that's why MC like Hammer him. came out with the "Please Hammer, don't hurt him." It was all a ripoff. So, uh, uh, all Sergeant Hammer. Hammer. Mm-hmm. But the Unlucky Charms will be there uh, as well. Unlucky Charms, man. Uh, I, you know, they debuted on television last week here in Birmingham. Uh, you know, the office has been receiving emails. Want to know who this Damon Christopher is. Want to know about Chris Knox. You know, uh, what's up with the Merchants of Death? Their T-shirts say Merchants of Death. They're managed by you, the, the meanest man with a mohawk living today. And uh, they're just, I don't know. Well, it's only uh, fitting I, that I, it's Southern Legends Fan Fest and I'm there because I am a Southern living legend, you know, whether you I want to be or not. Whether I want to be or not. But uh, I want to say we are sorry to Scotty Blaze. Uh, Scotty Blaze took one of the worst power bombs I've ever seen. But as I told him, tuck your chin, kid. Tuck your chin. But uh, yeah. this Saturday... If you can, uh, can, if you have a chin left, you know, that's, <laughs> that's, you know, whatever that move was you guys did, uh, I, I don't know what you guys call it. Something shenanigans or something. All I know Shamrocks is... Shamrocks and shenanigans. Shamrocks and shenanigans. Okay, I, feel, I felt like I needed to go to the chiropractor after watching the tape the other night, so... Uh, if if there was a twenty four hour chiropractor, I'd have went because I was selling for him. Well, you know, I, I, he shouldn't have fought. If he would have just just died, as he should have, then it would have been better off. But uh, before before we let everyone know how to, they can get tickets for pre sale and how to get in touch with you, Joey Image, do you have any thoughts? Because you've sat here quiet. You know, you you're a wrestler in this business. Uh, questions to Mad Dog about Honey Boo Boo. Uh, about Southern Legends Fan Fest, why you are from Southern Jersey, why you're not there, Joey? <laughs> I I only just learned who Honey Boo Boo was like recently. Um, <laughs> I don't feel bad for not knowing who she was though, or is. <laughs> well, it's like she died. Do, 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 do. And I know that uh, she's supposedly in talks now about maybe appearing in WrestleMania, and a lot of people are complaining about that. Hey man, if she's on TV and she's getting ratings on TV, she's gonna draw money. It's a business, yep. you know. The number one fucking rule is to draw money. If that's what You're she right. can do for WWE, then that's what she's gonna do. I agree. So no I questions, totally just comments. <laughs> Basically, but I totally, okay. totally agree with it. I, I, I agree with you, and you know, I caught some heat. You know, some of the boys before. Yeah, you know, I got, I gotta just smarten up the world. I really didn't know who she was till about three months ago. And my wife's like, you got to see this. And uh, it was like watching uh, a child version of Jerry Springer. I mean, it was, you know, except they didn't bring out, oh, who's your baby daddy? Oh, I'm sorry. That was Mari Povich. I'm sorry. That was, but similar. You know what I mean? It was just that shock television, except uh, the kid is just fine. She's got a good natural humor. And I mean, it, you don't you don't have to feed her lines. I mean, they give her the go go juice, which is like Red Bull, Mountain Dew, and some Pixie sticks. Which you know that would even make uh, some of the boys go crazy. You know, uh, I'm talking about the boys being the wrestlers. Uh, you know, they have to get all gimmicked up. Maybe they should try that. Maybe it'll be much cheaper. And everybody maybe end up having diabetes, as Will Ferrell, I mean, uh, Wilford Brimley would say. But. Uh, Maybe they save that money on the gimmicks. I don't know. And I'm not talking about pictures. Matt Denton, your (laughs) thoughts. Uh, That's that's fucked up. Matt Denton, uh, questions, comments, or concerns uh, for the other Mad Dog, Dan Sawyer, sir. You know what? I just got to thank you for directing me to TMZ.com for um, the Honey Boo Boo at GCW video. Or else I wouldn't have found out that Sonny's been arrested again. Oh, doggone it. Again? Do you want me? Do we need to call her? I've got her number too. She's been booking. She's been bugging me for a booking for about two, four months now. So uh, we can call her, or maybe just. It's hey, okay. You don't have to worry work. about her for now. She's already booked at rehab. Uh, who's that? Who's, who's got? Who's it booked to rehab? Sunny. Sunny. Ah, ah, man. Doggone. Oh, Probably gonna get her for a good price this weekend. Yeah, oh, oh, bail. Oh. <laughs> she didn't start. 
she did. She did uh, start off in Smoky Mountain Wrestling with Candido yeah, there. But, so she is kind of uh, a Southern legend. Because when she got inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame, she put over Bullet Bob and Terry Funk uh, and said, "You know, these guys were there when I started my career." So um, you know, she's a nice lady, guys. I will say that, and she does look good again because. Um, Candido came in, and I found the tape of him versus Scotty Riggs. Daphne was Scotty Riggs' manager, and uh, Sonny ended up coming in, and she had had a couple. I know that I know that sounds like I'm working, you guys, but uh, had a couple of sips of go-go juice, not a, probably a honey boo-boo version, and uh, she came in and just snatched Daphne by bow pigtails, uh, snap married her, and shoot suplexed her ass. But here's the thing. She suplexed right on top of Riggs, and uh, it, it was wild. And, like, she swore she would never, Daphne swore she would never come work for me again because she thought I should have ran out there and protected her. I was like, hell's bells. Who's going to get in the ring with Sonny? I saw what she just did to you. <laughs> she might hit me with one of those uh, implants and knock me in the second row. <laughs> so, uh, Mad Dog. How can everyone get in touch with you uh, for bookings, uh, for uh, upcoming events? How can everyone uh, get pre-sale tickets to this Saturday's event in Pell City, sir? And upcoming uh, events, if you have your schedule ahead of you, sir, or in front uh, of you. GCWPro.com is the way. GCWPro.com has got all upcoming events and stuff. You know, we only do them two weeks out at a time because unlike some independent shows, we do three or four a month on a, on a, on a bad month. So, um, you know, we'll be over in uh, Canton, Georgia in November with Buff the Stuff Bagwell back in action. And, uh, you know, he's like the $6 million man, and people just can't believe he's still able to go. And here's the damn thing. Brother broke his neck again, and he's still back in shape. And it was four months ago when he broke his neck, and he's back in the ring performing and looking in top notch. I, I, I got to say... How many, I mean, it's bad enough to break your neck once. And everybody probably saw that on Monday Night Nitro with the Steiners. But, uh, you know, to do it twice, holy cow. So come check him out. Uh, that'll be November 24th in Canton, Georgia. Uh, I swear yeah, to God, I would be pro- so happy if Buff came out and said, well, I just broke my neck and I can't wrestle tonight. So in my place will be Judy Bagwell competing for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one time he got his brother to show up, and I can't remember his brother's <laughs> name. He got he got his brother Marcus. to show up. It's a, yeah, I know Marcus, Marcus is Mo- yeah, Marcus Miguel, is. Miguel Miguel Bagwell. That's no, <laughs> no, it's not Miguel Bagwell. That's a rip. That guy called himself Miguel Bagwell. Uh, but um, yeah, I mean, he is in good shape. He's back, ready to go, but. You know, if you guys are anywhere within 500 miles of Pell City, Alabama, come down to the Pell City Civic Center. Fourth annual Southern Legends Fan Fest. Come see the Lightning Express, Brad Armstrong, Tim Horner, taking on Dr. Tom Pritchard, Micah Taylor, WWE Hall of Famer, Bullet Bob Armstrong, taking on the Equalizer. Eight huge matches. Come check it out. Unlucky Charms. It's going to be an interesting day. Battle Royal for number one contendership to the GCW TV title. What if it comes down to Knox? And Damon Christopher. Is it going to be we've like already, a... We've already, already discussed, discussed it. it. Okay. Yes, sir. Well, we'll just, uh, that, that'll be to be determined right there, won't it? We'll see yes, what sir. happens. I want to hear um, more about Miguel Bagwell. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's, the, that's the Latino half-brother of Marcus yes, Buff Bagwell. And you know what? They worked a show together, and he tagged with him. I was there for it, and he put him over as his brother. And he worked everybody. And I was like, you know what? For now on, that's your brother. That's your brother. Yep. So that's, that that's the joke. 